Right, this is a video about a dash cam and it's called Van True and that's the name of the company, a dash cam. And it's a very nice box they've sent. So I've been sent this uh, to have a look at. Now I know a couple of other YouTubers have been reviewing dash cams from Van True. I know the Travel Trolls looked at the N4 dash cam uh, from Van True and that was actually a three camera, I'll get this right, three camera dash cam. So it had a camera that you can put in the rear window. Now I've been sent this N2 dash cam, which is a dash cam that has two cameras. And I'm not sure why the N4 has three cameras, but never mind. So <laughs> they've sent me this dash cam to have a look at. I've been sent this dash cam for free uh, for the purpose of doing a review. Uh, this video is not sponsored by them. I'm not being paid to say anything nice about it. I'm just going to have a look at it and let you know what I think about it. Let's have a look what's in the box. Quite a nice little box. It's got some tabs here you can use to get things out. And got some quick start guide, which I've had a quick look at, a user manual, and a follow us on social media, and some information about sharing it. It says, share your best video and get a chance to win a free GPS receiver mount. Okay. What else have we got? We weigh in it. Right, so this is this is the dash cam. Okay, it's got the sticky blue things on it. Let's take those off. And that's the camera on the back. Okay, so that camera, that one rotates, so you can adjust that. And that's the forward facing camera. And it says it's a dual 1440p QHD. Got controls on the top. I think that's the menu button and the OK button and up and down and that sort of thing. On the side, get the right way around, uh, you've got the, I think it's a USB C, you've got the micro SD card and an HD out and it looks like there's a little reset thing there. Take this screen cover off as well and that's the screen. The screen is a very similar size to the to the next base uh, camera but the whole thing is a bit bigger and if you can see it in the palm of my hand it's, it's, it's a bit bigger than the palm of my hand. It's a little bit wider and it's got some microphone slots, I think they're there at the front. So that's the dash cam. What else have we got? Yeah, there's a USB C lead. And that's the 12 volt charger. So that's the one that will go in your dash uh, 12 volt socket. Dual charger. And USB C. Right, so after I fish, fish that back, that's the, the sucker for going to, onto the windscreen. And from what I've read of the quick start menu, the way you adjust it is you turn that round until that goes up, up to the top and that locks the, the sucker thing onto the windscreen. Yeah, the first thing I've learnt having dropped the camera is it's not broken. So it was relatively robust. But this clip here can get you get that around there that pushes on there and it has to click and it's got a little button to release it so the next base one was magnetic but that's got a little clip on it so that yeah, clips clicks into place so it would look a bit like that 
on the windscreen. And the final thing in the box which fell out with the sucker bounce is a tool for hooking it behind the windscreen so when you fit it that will allow you to hook it behind the windscreen to push it down in the trim at the side. So that's quite a nice little um, thing to have. So that's what you get in the box. Right, I've just switched it on and just a basic setup I think here. So we want it in English, so okay that. And <laughs> set on the so month, it's in month, day, year format. So presumably, yeah, that's month. And then you go to the next one, nine. Actually, seven, so that one. And not 2030 yet. 2021, okay, and okay. Oh, you can actually change it there. So if we, uh, miles per hour, and there it is. And I haven't got an SD card in it. That's it. And SD card, please format SD card. Okay. So presumably, ah, all right, okay, so menu, so, oh, other way, format SD card, okay, and format. Right. I'll see if I can show you around the menus. So let's switch it on. So that's the on button. And as soon as you switch it on, it starts recording, which is good. But to get into the menu, you have to stop it recording. So stop that and then press the M button again and it gets you into the menu. And you can get around the menu using the left and right buttons and obviously you press a button and it goes OK. So event files, there's no files in there because I had no events. So OK that. Normal, that seems to be the files it's already recorded so you can work your way through those. And you've got a play button, probably not very interesting at the moment. just sitting there doing nothing. So that's how you get into the files. So press that button to get back and back again. And what else we got? So record setup, let's have a look at that. Yeah, so hopefully you can see that a bit better now. So if I press that button, it switches the menu off, and it starts recording. Press the OK button, stops the recording. Press the menu button, gets you into the menu and you can use the left and right arrows to get through to the various options there. So have a look at record setup. So OK that and OK and we'll check. So it does dual recording. OK and you can see various options here. I've set it on 1080p plus 1080p at 30 frames a second. You can go up to as it say to 140p and various sort of different options there. I think 1080 plus 1080 is probably fine. It's not actually 4K, but uh, it's and it records two different files here. So one for the front camera, one for the rear camera. So okay, that you can have it just single recording if you want, and that does the 4K. So if you want to do 4K recording just use the front camera by the looks of it. I might have a little play with that later. So let's go back to dual recording and we'll have it 1080 plus 1080. 
press the menu button to get back, loop recording. I understand that this records three minute uh, videos and or five minute videos and does it in a loop. So when you get to the end, it overwrites the oldest one. It's got infrared LEDs. Uh, you probably want to leave that on auto. And that's part of its detection system, I guess. It's got a G sensor and there are different levels of sens sensitivity. I'll leave it on the middle one, see how we get on. Might need to adjust that. Back, and what else we got? System setup. Obviously you choose the language. Try not to change that. You can format the SD card and date and time. You can put the date and time in there and you can choose the format of the date and time. So I've already done that. Set up the date and presumably Yes, you can change it. Oh, that's good. Get it in the uh, UK format. Day, day, month, month, year, year. Yeah, it will switch it off. Switch the LCD screen off automatically or 30 seconds, one minute or three minutes. I'll leave it on auto. Press the menu button. And back to files. Yeah. So that's all there is to it. Right, so I've fitted it up as close as I can to the rear view mirror. And I'm gonna run the wires under here, under the, under the thing. And then all the way down there, down the side, underneath into the plug. It's only just about reaches. Stick it behind this trim here. Yeah, that's about it. So up along, and I've tucked it under, under here and under here, and then down there, along here, and under there. Secured it with a cable tie. I put another one in there. So the major problem for me, uh, if you can see this, is that the rear camera is completely obscured by the mirror. So the only thing I can think of doing is actually moving it down a little bit. And then it's actually in the swept area of the windscreen, which you're not supposed to do. I can't move it any further over there because there's not enough length on the lead. Yeah, so what I've had to do is move it over much over to much further over to the side. Otherwise this rear view camera is not gonna see anything. The other issue is of course when I close these blinds I have to take the dash cam down, otherwise the blind won't close. I mean that was the same on the other dash cam on the next base dash cam, you have to take the dash cam off to close the blinds. One of the reasons I use the tailor made uh, windscreen cover. Yeah, because of this, this rear view camera, it always seems to be looking at the rear view mirror. I can't move it over into the center, A, because the lead is not long enough, 
and B because that's normally where I put my GoPro. Anyway, good job I got my checklist in Yeah, that's right. Into the water on the way out. Yeah, I think that's down there, isn't it? It's where that man's walking. Right. Yeah, so uh, anyway, I managed to set off with the electricity cable, well, start the engine with the electricity cable still plugged in. It is so hot, it's just can't think straight. Anyway, good job I got the checklist in. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. And then it's into the water on the way out. Yeah, I think that's down there, isn't it? It's where that man's walking. Right, okay. I won't spoil it for you, I was going to say what that's all about, but uh, have a look at that video. I'll put a link up here for it. And uh, oh, yeah. it's, a, it's a nice, interesting video about towing a car. Yep. So have a look at that. Seems cool around here. Yeah, I think we'll just stay around here. Yeah. Camps here. Yeah, there's a load of base camps here. Well, uh, so it's obviously very popular. Right, so what did I think of the Vantrue N2 Pro dash cam? Well, it gives you a good clear picture in 1080p and you've got two cameras on it. So you've got the front facing one and the rear facing one. Now in the motorhome, I don't see the point of the rear facing camera because I'm going to be looking at a door and um, because I can't position it right in the middle because I'm using a GoPro, it gives me a bit squashed image, uh, as you can see, uh, of one side, of, depending on which side you've got it. So I've actually turned off this rear-facing camera. If I'm honest, the picture is a bit oversaturated. The, the colours are a bit too overdone, really. And if you compare that with the GoPro footage, I think you'll see that it the everything seems to have like a, either a blue or a orange glow to it so I've tried to turn that down in the in the menu on the camera to see if uh, I make a difference it's a little bit better so would I be using it to record my journeys no I don't think I'll be rec recording my journeys with it the go like I say the GoPro is much better the other drawback I think it is is there's no battery that comes with this so I can't I can't show you the menu on here um, you know, I'm pressing the button because it's got no built-in battery it'd be nice if it actually had a built-in battery which means that you could operate it obviously without a lead plugged in if you plug in the lead into the uh, USB-C it will power it up so you can do it but uh, it's just a shame it's not got a built-in battery the other thing about it is the HDMI port here that is an HDMI out and if you plug it in all it really does is allow you to view the footage it doesn't do it and you can't operate the menus um, using and see what you're doing on the menus which is a bit of a disappointment I think I mentioned that the lead could be a li little bit longer particularly for motorhomes it needs to be about a foot longer uh, so you can fit it in the middle of the windscreen uh, particularly the way I've rooted it I think you could route it a different uh, a different way but it would be good if the lead was a little bit longer and I've actually said that to Vantrue and uh, they said they'll have a look at that 
the clip on the front here, they've got this little clip here. Can you see that? I think that's a little bit, I don't know, it's a little bit fiddly. And maybe, maybe after a while, if you keep unplugging that, I'm not sure how long that is going to last. I I I've, ugh, can't get it back, see? Okay, that's it. I tend to um, um, unsucker the whole thing, basically. And whilst we're on the idea of the sucker, that is a really good sucker mechanism. That's one of the, and its best features. It, it really does feel like it's gripping and it's not going to come off the windscreen. It's priced around about £129-£130, so it's bang on the upper end of the next based uh, dash cams. So it has to compete with the next next base dash cams which obviously are, the, are all the ones that you'll see in Halfords and everything you know seem to have a lot of the market I think the picture quality apart from the colors is as good as the next base one but you'll have to let me know what you think of the pictures that I show you I try not to edit them too much so you let us know what you think and uh, is it something you'd be interested in I will leave a link to the product in the description below and there'll be a link at the end of this video. So that's it for this uh, little review of the Vantrue N2 Pro dash cam. I will be using this. I've actually given my uh, next based uh, dash cam to Glyn so his dash cam packed up so he's uh, he's got my uh, next based dash cam so he'll be using that. But yeah it's quite a nice little product. It's It's worth having a look at and I will carry on using it. So thanks for watching, give us a thumbs up, remember to subscribe and I'll bring you more product reviews in the future.